On today's episode, Missy and I are talking about connection through service. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm Chris, here with my co-host, Missy. And this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips and ways that we can find our inner peace and happiness in our daily lives. So today we're talking about connection through service, and uh, we will jump into uh, this topic. So... uh, how is life, Missy? What's uh, what's been happening? Well, it's been uh, definitely different than normal. Um, I'm a homebody normally, so this is really not a problem for me. And at the same time, um, I realize that a lot of people are probably struggling without, you know, the social interaction. Um, and so I think that uh, it's important that we talk about this so we can help people, you know, find other ways to connect so that it doesn't lead to things like sadness and depression and loneliness. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, that's a really good point with, um, you know, people being more isolated, uh, even though we have technology, which, you know, helps us to kind of be a little bit closer to each other, but uh, still, we, we've got that isolation, and for a number of people, especially those, you know, more extroverted, uh, this is probably quite the challenge. You know, it's, I, I'm typically an introvert, so... Yeah. yeah, you know, me being told isolate yourself from society is, you know, like, cool, <laughs> no really? <big> deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, like, I, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> and, you know, and some of the things that I do for, for the people, the clients that I represent in my marketing company as well, um, you know, we're face to face with a lot of people. We're stopping by businesses and advertising products and services. So it's, um, you know, it's finding a new way to market. And I think that for the business people, that this definitely could be a good opportunity to think of not what's going to happen to me, but what can I do for you? And um, I was taught that people listen with the what's in it for me mentality. And when you have that mentality speaking to somebody, then they're more apt to go, you know what? Wow, that's a great idea. If they're looking to help me, maybe I can help them. How can I help you? And then we have a reciprocity that's going between us to make sure that everybody flourishes and it's a win-win. Right. And, and I, I think that's one of the ways that we can look at, you know, that service is, you know, how do we do that win-win? Yeah. You know, that not everyone, and I don't think even every interaction necessarily needs to be altruistic. You know, so there's really no big reason why we can't do a win-win you know, where we can make things work and get creative. Because I, I think that's one of the keys to all of this is what is our creativity yeah. in helping us to get outside of this isolation, even if it's not physically. Absolutely. I mean, I, what's trying to emerge, right? You know, because uh, we tend to have a me mentality and it's a uh, very masculine in the, let's get it done. What do we have to do? Let's get it done. So we're checking off tasks lists. We're, we're, we're reaching goals. And now we get to stop and look at things a little bit differently. Exactly. Like you said, what can we do to be creative? How can we make this work? Um, you know, we're asking different kinds of questions rather than get it done. We're looking at, um, you know, what, what can we do to support yes, still getting it done, but we get to be a little bit more creative in the process instead of a, this is the way we've always done it. So we're going to keep doing it this way. Now we get to look at it as, uh, you know, what do I get to create around this? Exactly. You know, and I, I think it's learning some of these new ways of thinking. And as you say, you know, we need to change that notion that, um, you know, doing is the end all. Um, 
I was talking to a couple of my clients who, you know, are, are kind of struggling with, with this issue that, you know, it's like, well, I, I can't be doing anything. <laughs> and to me, it's all about rephrasing it, you know? So one, you know, if the best you can do right now is stay at home and watch TV because you're not going to, you know, make matters worse, then that's a doing. Yeah. You are watching TV, which is a doing. Um, you know, I, I've tried to encourage people maybe spend more time in like a me uh, mindful meditation. You know, just take some quiet time for yourself. And, you know, I, I've had the response, well, while I'm doing this quiet time, I keep thinking of all these things I should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, my answer to that is, well, what about looking at that from the aspect that your meditation period is doing? Yeah. You know, why, why do we consider sitting in silence, not doing anything, and like washing the dishes, I'm doing something? Well, you know, society, I think, has trained us to, you know, um, to, to measure our level of success by what we have done. You know, and now we're, we're not so much, it's like, it's like the universe is forcing us to slow down and take a different approach to things so that we can, we can come up with new ideas and new ways of communicating with one another. And without that physical, uh, you know, placement, basically. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing that I've been reflecting on this, that, you know, we still have what we call the imagination, you know, in the, in the sense that I'm not saying making up stories type sense, but in the sense that we can still think outside of what our reality is. Mm -hmm. So we still have that ability where we can think through, well, what am I going to do when this is over? Mm -hmm. um, you know, make some plans for that, you know, and, and maybe do uh, talk to some people, you know, what, what about doing like a, a party or a celebration? Yeah. You know, when, when all of this is over and, and start planning that now. Imagine what that would be in, in the sense of who would you invite? What would you serve? What would you do? Yeah. You know, so we can get ourselves mentally out of, uh, you know, a, a physical type of isolation. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably going to take a different turn on what you just said. I love what you just said and I support that wholeheartedly. And um, I'm doing a program right now and I do lessons every day. And one of the lessons um, in the last few days was something to the effect of um, if I defend myself, I believe I'm being attacked. And in that, what it teaches you is that a planned mind, a mind that is planning for the future is unhealed. OK, so in other words, if we're constantly trying to see what we can do in the future, we're not living in our moment. And mm -hmm. not living in our moment is taking away the joy and the happiness and causing stress and worry and anxiety. So even though I think, what a great idea, you know, like, let's, let's plan for this. Let's make sure that we know that we're going to get out of this. Um, on, on another turn, you know, if you feel anxious and worrisome over it, then maybe bring yourself back to the current moment to help get yourself out of the negative thought process. Yeah, definitely. And I totally agree with what you were just saying. You know, the basis is to live in the moment yeah. and enjoy what we have or just feel what's going on in the moment. If you're feeling anxious in the moment, you're feeling anxious, yeah. you know, so you, you just kind of go with what, you know, you've got. So, no, I mean, we're, we're not totally opposite on this, no, you know. No, and I mean, um, I support both sides of the tail. Yeah. Because I agree with you, if, if planning is making me more anxious for the fact that I don't know when everything is going to end, then yeah, then stop planning it. Yep. You know, so you, you don't want to lead yourself down a path that creates anxiety. Yep. What, you know, we're trying to promote is what is that path to reduce your anxiety? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I would definitely emphasize we've got to live in, in the present moment. Yeah, and one of the things that you just said totally hits home because I was just um, actually discussing this with my 10 year old, which may, most people may be like, why would you tell them that? But at the same time, like he was sad this morning and he's sitting on my lap and you know, if this is all very overwhelming, they're learning new school, they have to do it from home. They don't know what they're doing. They don't feel yep. great about it because that is like not something they've done before. But then he's telling himself, well, I'm not smart enough. I can't handle this on my own. I need help. 
And I'm like, look, first of all, great, good for you. You're experiencing your experience. That is one of the levels of mastery. You know, and I said, I'm so proud of you, one, that you're doing that, and two, that you're allowing me to be here to support you through it. You know, so, I mean, it's very important that, that we all experience our experience. You know, if you're mad one minute, be mad. If you're anxious, be anxious. And when you're done, put your big girl panties on and, you know, start to figure out like, okay, what am I grateful for? What do I have to be happy about? What's joyous about this? And what's going to emerge from all of this? And, and that's what I, I think the piece that many people miss when they hear about, you know, mindfully staying in the moment is a number of people think that that means, well, I've got to find like happiness in every moment that I have. Yeah. And really what we're saying is exactly what you told the 10 year old, you know, it, it's, you stay in the moment to feel what you feel, Yeah. you know, and, and if you're not feeling happy in the moment, then you're not feeling happy in the moment, you know, and, and you need to embrace that feeling, accept that feeling. Mm -hmm. But then we move that into that action of, all right, so what do I do with that feeling? Yeah. Which could be meditation, which could be just sitting on the couch. Yep. And, and look, this is what will bring us back to service because you're not the only one that's experiencing things like this and supporting someone else through this will help you be able to teach yourself what you need to learn in the moment as well. You know, this is contribution or connection through service, you know, being able to call like, look, Hey, I'm really feeling anxious. Call a girlfriend, call a, a guy friend, you know, um, I don't like to always, you know, put all my business out there, but there are a select few of people that I want to share this experience with and I know I can rely on for support. So that's what I think that is best is, is helping people through what's going on. And if you know somebody needs uh, groceries and they're not well or they're over the age of 70, you know, I have a girlfriend who's helping my brother who's dealing with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma right now. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's, I feel healed. I'm sorry, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I feel like he's healed and he's done all of this therapy. But at the same time, do we want him out running the roads, doing grocery shopping, looking for product? No. And she's back home in Maryland and she's going grocery shopping for them. And, you know, wow, what a, a wonderful, uh, heart-filled thing to do. I'm grateful for her. She feels good doing it. And my brother doesn't have to have the concern. So, you know, being able to have things like that, we're connecting with each other, you know, through serving. Oh, definitely. And, you know, when you're feeling that sense of, of isolation and, you know, maybe anxieties, depression, whatever, the more you can get outside of yourself and focus on somebody else's needs yeah. really is going to not just refocus you so that you're not thinking about your own, you know, depressions, but, if, if you can get that satisfaction that somebody was helped, somebody was assisted in this, then yes, you have connected with that person, but now you also start to feel better about yourself because you don't feel so useless. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that is even just through a phone call or maybe if you can, you know, send in a donation to some group or, or actively getting out there, you know, however it is. Um, but the focus being on another person and what they're going through is going to help us in our own struggle. Yeah. But yeah, there is that connection. You know, whether you're sending money and never seeing somebody, you're still connected, uh, you know, in, in that action that you did, which is outside of yourself. I feel, and maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but I feel like for me and my experience that, um, I find I am a great teacher about what I need to know the most. And it really does open up me as a channel to be able to let God's love flow through me to somebody else and learn at the same time, similar to what you just said. You know, yep. and you know, we're channels. That's what we are. We're here to help ferry each other through all of these experiences. And, um, you know, think about that. If you're teaching somebody, people are constantly coming to you with, um, you know, I have this problem or can you help me through that? You know, this is your opportunity to learn not only from them, but for your, from yourself on, you know, as you allow that message to come through you. Yeah, no, most definitely. And it, it's, you know, using our, our gifts and talents and skills that take us outside of self, 
you know, and one thing that I, I try to always stress that, you know, mindfulness is not a selfish practice. No. You know, even though we talk a lot about, you know, learning about yourself and, you know, what are you feeling and your meditation, you know, people can get that wrong notion that it's self-centered, therefore selfish. Yeah. Not, not at all. It, it's that going inward to find what my gifts, talents, and all of that are so that I can then go outward yeah. with that. You know, if I can find a happiness and an inner peace, then I can spread that to others. This isn't just for me to hold on to and keep. Yeah. And, you know, this is really, this is common, common humanity. This is self-compassion. And this is empathizing all in one. That's what we're all coping with right now is finding other people that are going through the same thing, how we can help best support ourselves and them, and then being able to be supportive through that empathy and going, oh, I can relate. I know what you're going through. And, you know, I'm here for support. So, so you know, when we start doing all of that, that is where even if we're physically isolated, we're still connected. Yeah, and you know, that could bring us to a listener challenge of you know, what are we doing for somebody else? You know, we, yes, we have to deal with us and, and yep. they're number one, we get it. But at the same time, like, what are you doing to support other people that are going through this? I mean, we have this hashtag that's going around in this together. Right. And yep. I'd love to see people saying, you know, quote unquote, you know, hashtag on finding peace, listener challenge. What are we doing to, to show that we're in this together through our service and our humanity? Because yep. the good news needs to be shared, really. I, I totally agree. And, and I think that's an awesome listener challenge. Um, so hopefully people, uh, you know, start posting about that, start using the hashtag. Yep. Um, I, I think that's that's awesome to, to learn from others and what they're doing and how they're doing it, you know, it is going to make a difference. And if you're not sure, you know, what to do or say your own kind of feeling depressed right now, um, uh, you know, on some of these, um, I don't want to give out brand names, I guess, but you know, your, your speakers that you can talk to in your home that, you know, so any version of those that you may have, um, there is an app about good news. Nice. So just to ask your speaker of choice, um, you know, to share some good news. And actually, they will give you news stories of positive things and people helping other people, okay. you know, which could either give you some ideas and can help you to uh, maybe even feel better that, you know, it's not all negative, you know, out there. One, one more thing I, I think before we wrap up, I think I'd like to share is that I think a lot of the times that we're feeling down, we're in our heads and, yep. you know, coming into your heart and leading with love is the most important thing that we can do right now uh, to connect with each other, to be there for one another. And, um, you know, just to, to share a little bit of the, the good stuff that we actually get for free in this life, which exactly, you know, so, um, that's that's pretty much my final thought. I would love to hear what you think uh, could be a good advantage for all of us to to share and pass on to one another, staying in our peace. Yeah, and I totally agree with what you were saying. And I, I think for kind of my final thought on this is we need to keep the perspective on what we can control and what we can't control. Ooh. And you know, looking at, you know, the fact that we're isolated and the reasons for that are things that are out of our control. There's, there's nothing you can do about it. So as much as you can, just let that go. Yeah. Great time well, for self-improvement, really. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. Because that's in our control. Yeah. You know, so what I do with me or how I serve others or how I feel, that's all that stuff in, in our control. So exactly, you know, the, this time for working on yourself to, to find that happiness, that inner peace, that contentment. Um, so focus on what's in your control, do what's in your control and um, see how you feel Absolutely. and do the listener challenge. Yeah. And do the listener challenge. <laughs>
Well, um, thank you guys all for listening. I really appreciate your time, Chris, and uh, we love you all. Yep. Thanks, Missy, for all the good sharing, and uh, we look forward to hearing from all of you. Um, and if you have any uh, topic ideas or anything that you want to share with us, feel free to use the links in the show notes um, or just uh, get on social media and let us know. So uh, thank you, everyone, and have a mindful day. Bye-bye.